it's time. Okay guys, so it is time. You've seen the title. You know what's gonna happen in this video and I don't know if I'm preparing myself emotionally for what I'm about to put myself through but also at the same time like you know what maybe it might be a fun time reading this like who knows maybe I'll enjoy myself like let's not go in with a negative headspace straight away I might end up liking this book who freaking knows so you guys can see from the title I am reading Twilight for the very first time in this video and I am low-key excited to do this because I tweeted this out on Twitter. I'm like low-key thinking about reading Twilight for the very first time. And when I tweeted this out, a lot of you responded saying, do it, do it, please. We need it right now. And then also my friend Jesse from Bro Ties and Books, they commented on my tweet and were like, so you mean to tell me that you have the nerve to pretend like you know what it's like having read this book. And like, that's honestly a lie I've been living with. Everyone always like bashes Twilight and like compares it to like the olden days of books that we've all read. And I'm sitting here not having read it. Like I've never read Twilight. I don't know the jokes. I act like I can go along with all these jokes when in reality, I've never read it. So I don't know. I do want to clarify before this video goes any further that I have seen all of the Twilight movies. I was very much a part of the whole movie franchise and like when they all came out, I went to see every single one of them in the cinema. I literally, I went to see them all. I've seen them all at least three times, probably more than three times, like all of them each. And so I'm very familiar with the story, but I've heard from a lot of people the books are very different and it's a whole different story from the movies because I was team Jacob in the movies and Chloe has told me several times that I am not going to be team Jacob in the books. So I feel like that's a huge difference already straight away. Yeah, I did order it. I just went onto Amazon. I found a secondhand copy of it, like a used copy that was like really, really cheap and it cost me like three euros. So that's how much I spent on it. But yeah, here we go. Time to open it and begin this journey. Oh my God, okay, here. We have her. But yeah, here we go. I'm going to be reading Twilight for the first time. <laughs> this cover is so bad. I really don't like this cover. Like, I just don't get it. Like, why is she holding an apple? Someone explained this to me why she's holding the apple and like it symbolizes something. But to me, this just screams Snow White. <laughs> That's what I get from this, like Snow White. Is this book about Snow White? No, it's about vampires. How many pages is this? Oh, is this like New Moon hint? Ooh, we get a sneak peek at New Moon. We get like the first few chapters. Love that. It's 434 pages. So this is gonna be an experience. I'm gonna vlog all of my thoughts, all of my emotions. This is probably gonna be very much spoilers involved in this book. So if you haven't read it and you don't want to be spoiled, I would just say not to keep watching because I'm very much gonna be talking about all of the different spoilers in here. So spoilers will be coming. That is your spoiler warning. And yes, Time to go read Twilight. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting myself involved for, but here we go. Okay guys, so I've moved into my little office room and I have a blanket. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm about to start Twilight. You guys may know that I used to read in here during my Reading Rush vlogs from last summer. So that's where I'm reading in here. I also just tweeted out to let people know that it was happening, that this was happening. And yeah, I feel like I'm gonna read in here throughout the whole duration of this reading vlog because you know what, it just, okay. <laughs> I just bashed how I didn't like this cover. And then I remembered that this exists. I also have not read that book, side note. Also, I noticed this when I was like literally getting ready to sit down and film, um, that this has a contents page. Okay, you cannot see. This has a contents page. Like, I forgot books ever even did that. Like, where did it say, like, what page each chapter starts at? Like, I for literally forgot that was a thing that happened in books at times. I'm already just like, <laughs> it's just the, the dialogue was so weird. Okay, 
So obviously Bella is leaving Phoenix to go to her dad Forks where she's going to see her dad because he lives in Forks. The parents are separated, she's going to Forks, whatever. That's like the start of the movie, we all know that part. So it's like, Bella, my mom said, and then the last of a thousand times before I get on the plane. <laughs> and then it's, you don't have to do this. Like, you'd swear she was going to do the most awful thing ever. She's going to spend time with her dad. You know that part in a movie when like someone's leaving and like the person's like, I love you so much, please don't do this. You don't have to do this. But I have to, you don't understand. My life begins out there. Like that's what this is feeling like to me right now. Like you don't have to do this. She's going to see her dad, literally calm down. Okay, I'm just, I don't know, you know what, I'm just gonna keep going with it because like right now she's like really awkward about having to go and stay with her dad even though she's choosing to do this. She's like, it's gonna be so awkward and, it's like, and I'm like, so why are you going then in the first place? Okay, Billy Black just got mentioned and I'm pretty sure that's Jacob's dad. Love that, okay. Okay, I turned the camera off because I didn't think I was gonna have much more else to say because I was like, you know what, I just need to actually start reading and get more into the book because I'm literally only on page seven. And like, I, I knew going into this that Bella was gonna be an issue for me because even in the movies, Bella irritated me. She was very annoying and I didn't like her. But, and then people say she's worse in the book, so. I was expecting that and I knew that, that was probably gonna be a main issue for me. Her dad just basically told her that he bought her a car, like a free car. It's probably, it's really old or whatever, but he literally bought you a car because he said he wanted to make sure that she'd be happy here in Forks. And he's like, she's like, thanks. That's really nice, dad. Thanks, I really appreciate it. And then he's, she's like, no need to add that me being happy in Forks is an impossibility. He didn't need to suffer along with me. And I never looked a free truck in the mouth or engine. But like, why is she in Forks if she doesn't want to be there? Am I wrong or did I literally miss something at the very few pages where like this was her own choice to go there and now she's just, I'm confused, okay? I'm just a little bit confused. Like I'm hoping maybe it's gonna be explained why she came here because as of right now, I'm feeling like she went there of her own free will and now she's just like, oh, I really don't wanna be here. But like she literally went of her own free will, so. <laughs> I don't get it. But I just got like my first foreshadow in the book. So I'm on page 13. <laughs> I literally haven't made much progress yet. But basically she's starting her new school. She's about to get out of the car and go into the school for the first time. And she's like, I can do this. I lied to myself. No one is going to bite me. Honey, just you wait till breaking dawn. Okay, so I've started to realize that this video is probably gonna be really long because I'm gonna have <laughs> thoughts every two seconds. On the next page, and there's a part where she's about to talk to obviously the, probably the first student in the school. And the way this boy is being described, like, I can't, I can't. So it says, when the bell rang, uh, a gangly boy with skin problems and hair black as an oil slick <laughs> leaned again across the aisle to talk to me. I have never seen anyone described in a book as someone with skin problems. Like, <sighs> what the fuck? Okay, now she's making albino references. Guy Eric, I don't even remember who Eric is. Why do I not remember this person? Like, who's Eric? I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. But he's apparently someone. And she's talking to him and he's like, oh, you don't look very tan for someone who lives in Arizona. And she's like, my mother is part albino. And then she was like, oh, he doesn't get my humor. And I was like, okay, weird joke, but okay. And then now I'm on the part where she's finally meeting, I'm assuming the whole, oh my God, what are their names? Collins. <laughs> the whole Collins is who she's meeting right now. Like she sees them in the cafeteria across their eating, whatever. And she's saying like, they're so pale, they're so pale. And she's like, they're paler than me, the albino. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. okay. Finished the first chapter and Edward already wants to change classes because he doesn't want to sit beside Bella in biology. And like, I can't blame him. I honestly can't. Okay guys, so it's actually the next day now because I only ended up reading one chapter of Twilight yesterday before I was like, 
I'm gonna take a break. Now today I'm gonna obviously try and make a lot more progress because I literally read the first chapter yesterday. I'm at a scene right now on page 37 because this is the part I remember in the movies and I actually really liked the scene because I just thought it was so awkward and funny like not in a good way I guess like it was just funny to watch because how awkward it was and it's the part where they're in the biology class and Edward comes back like he, after his disappearance and they're about to interact for the very first time and I just remember this scene just being so awkward so I'm so excited to see how it's gonna play out in the book. Oh, awkward and fun. Oh, I love it. It's just the whole pro face and a face. Yes, you're correct. It is pro face. <laughs> It's just such an awkward encounter. Okay, so Edward is finally asking the question that I have been wondering this entire time because now they're obviously done their lab project because they did it so fast because they're iconic at biology apparently. So basically, Bella's, Edward's like, oh, you don't like the cold? You don't like the rain? And then she's like, no, I don't. It, and then he's like, oh, so why did you come here? And she's like, it's complicated because, you know, she's not like other girls kind of thing. Like she's been that quirky person. And then he's literally like, why did you come here then? And she's like, it's complicated. And he's like, I think I can keep up. So finally, we're going to find out why she actually came here because I genuinely thought she was coming here of her own free will. So maybe she wasn't. And I've been judging her this whole time, even though I've had plenty of other reasons to judge Bella apart from her decision to go the forks a few moments later okay maybe not <laughs> i i i don't understand bella like she's talking about like how your man or her mom's new boyfriend or new husband plays ba base baseball maybe basketball i don't know i don't know sports it's me i'm gay i don't know sports and so he's like oh he travels around a lot so like she was like, oh, so you must have came to Forks because you wanted your mum to travel with him. And she was like, no, she did not send me here. I sent myself. So I really just don't understand why she's so mad about it. Like, why did you send yourself if you didn't want to go? And then, okay, but then Edward, I don't understand. Either do I, Edward. Either do I. Okay, so I've moved back into this room and I just got to the scene where Bella somehow is driving her car and the next minute she's out with the car on the ground. About to get hit by another car and then Edward just comes out of nowhere and just like stops the car and saves her from getting hit and dying. And like, yeah, that just happened. I don't remember that happening so early in the story. I wasn't ready for that part to already happen, but it's happened. She got saved by the car. She's gonna start catching feelings now because you know, when a boy saves you from getting hit by a car with his superhuman strength, you catch feelings. Like, honestly, you just can't help it. Like, you're just gone. Like. RIP your emotions, You, he has them, like he has your heart. So like, it's understandable how she's gonna start catching feelings. Like I would too if someone saved me from a car. Honestly, I would catch feelings if a boy just said like hi and showed any bit of interest in me because I'm that single. Okay, so they're at the hospital and so Bella's leaving and stuff and then Edward's just like, oh no, you're fine. You just hit your head really hard. And then she goes, there's nothing wrong with my head. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's every boy's dream to hear that there's nothing wrong with your head. <laughs> I can't. I hate my mind. Okay, so I'm on page 70 and I actually am enjoying reading this even if it's quite not great, you know? I am enjoying myself. The like thing that's really and starting to annoy me and literally as I've said it, money on page 70 is the fact she constantly keeps saying that Edward has a perfect face. Like constantly. Like it's literally the only adjective I think she uses for his face. Just every time she goes, I look at his perfect face. I see his perfect face looking at me. I look up and see his perfect face. I'm like, do you have anything else to say about his face? Like, any other adjective besides perfect. <sighs> and now Bella just asked Edward if he has a multiple personality disorder. 
I can't. I can't with Bella. I honestly, I, I just can't. I, <laughs> I just can't. I am understanding why people are actually Team Edward because the sarcasm he is throwing at Bella is sending me because I obviously, as we can all tell, I don't like Bella. And like, he's being so rude back to her and I'm living for it. So basically, uh, Bella is like avoiding this dance because she got asked out by literally three boys to go to this one dance. I can't even get a text back from someone, but she managed to get three boys. And then I know she ends up getting Edward and fucking Jacob. Five, five. I can't get one. But that is besides the point. He basically said, I heard that you're going to Seattle that day and I was wondering if you wanted a ride. And then she goes, that was unexpected. And then she goes, what? I wasn't sure what he was getting at. Do you want a ride to Seattle? With who? I asked, mystified. And then he says, myself, obviously. Okay, so it's kind of happening where I am starting to kind of understand why people love Edward and I feel like I'm kind of catching feelings for him myself, so this is great. Basically, he's still asking her to go to Seattle, and it's like the very end, and he's like, will you go with me to Seattle? And then she says, yes, and then it's like, you really should stay away from me. He warned, and then it's like, I'll see you in class. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> the tension. Like, I'm kind of like, oh, he's so mysterious. I want to know more about him. Like, why is this happening? <laughs> Why? Okay everyone, so as you can see it's a bit later because I'm now in bed, but I am obviously still reading. I am now on page 112 and I just finally got to see Jacob and that made me very happy and there was like a whole scene with Jacob in it and I did not realise Jacob is 15 in this, like Bella's 17 and he's 15. I did not know that. Or I mean to say I do not remember that, like I thought they were like the same age but clearly not so basically jacob and like bella and all of her friends and stuff are like on the beach at some beach they're doing some like camp out or so i don't know what they were doing they're at a beach and so like they brought up like the cullens and stuff like oh why aren't the cullens here and then jacob like told this big story and he was like oh the cold ones aren't allowed to come on the beach they made this truce back way back with my great grandfather and stuff and i was like oh okay because i don't remember if in the movie jacob's the one who tells her that or does he? I thought Bella found out about vampires herself by like going on the internet and like Googling stuff. But apparently it was Jacob who told her. So I kind of like that version better than the movie. So we love that because I love Jacob. Okay, so I'm on page 157 now. And basically like Bella had this like, confrontation with like these men and stuff happened. And of course, Edward was there to save the day because... Of course he was. And so now they're like driving home and stuff. And basically Edward has already just told her that he can like read minds. And like she's acting like this is completely normal. And not like confused as to how he's able to read minds. And then she's like, how did you find me? And he's like, I followed your scent. And she's just acting very normal to all of this. Like I understand that she's after finding out stuff about vampires. And like she thinks he's a vampire. But still, would you not be like, okay, you followed my scent. Like, do I smell bad? Like... You know? And then, like, she's after finding out that he can't read her mind. And she's like, okay, so why don't you think you can hear me? And then he's like, I don't know. Whatever. Like, maybe you're, like, on an AM frequency and I can only pick up the FM frequency. And so she was basically like, my mind doesn't work right. I'm a freak? Question mark. And then it's literally like, the words bothered me more than they should. Probably because the speculation hit home. I'd always suspected as much and it embarrassed me to have it confirmed. <laughs> she's basically calling herself a freak and like, where's the lie, honestly? Because she's just speaking the truth. Okay, so remember how I thought I was going to start liking Edward and like, you know, I buy it maybe into the romance even though I can't stand Bella. She really freaking irritates me. But like, I'm on page 171. I just finished that chapter. And like, Bella has just said how she's irrevocably in love with Edward. I'm like, you guys have barely <laughs> spoken. We've had a couple of interactions. He's said that he knows your scent and he can't read your mind and that he stalks you and stuff and now you're like oh my god i love him okay whatever anyways i thought the romance in the movie was a bit better i'm starting to understand that maybe the movies are actually better than, than the books because 
even like the way she just like said he was a vampire like in the movie it's the whole forest scene and she's like i know what you are and he's like say it and then it's like vampire like we didn't even get that in this it's just in the them driving in a car and he's like she's like oh yeah i know all this stuff like and then he's like yeah you're not you're not wrong okay guys so it's the next morning and and now i'm on page 247 i'm over halfway through and <laughs> Bella and Edward have finally, well, they're trying their first kiss and I just think the interaction is just so funny. They start kissing and it's like, oh, we didn't expect the blood to run to my lips and my breath to be so hot that my fingers knotted in his hair. And then so he pushes her away from kissing him and she goes, oops. And then he holds her face away from his and she's like, should I? And she's like, I tried to disengage myself to give him some room. His hands refused to let me move so much as an inch. No, it's tolerable. Wait for a moment, please. His voice was polite, controlled. <laughs> I kept my eyes on him, watched as the excitement in them faded and gentled. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. It's just like he got very excited. It's like, oh, give him a second to calm down. Like, things are getting too heated. Like, he needs to... You know, so now I just can't because of this insta love. Like seriously, it's just so insta lovey. We found out that Edward has basically been watching her every night that he sleeps because that's completely normal. And she literally didn't even react to the fact that he was watching her sleep for like weeks. Like, okay, I don't understand why you wouldn't be concerned about that. And then he basically says that, oh, I heard you say you loved me in your sleep. And then she's like, you knew that already. He was like, oh, it's nice to hear anyways. And she's like, I love you, I whispered. And then he goes, you are my life now. <laughs> I just can't with the insta-love. Like, I want to ship it, but like, I literally can't. So finally, Bella's getting to meet everyone else at the house and stuff like that. And Edward just played like a song for Bella on the piano that he wrote about her or something. Like he composed it and it's all about her. And so she started crying at it because as you do when a boy writes you a song on the piano and he plays for you the first time, you obviously cry, we all know this. She was wiping away her tears and like she missed a tear, of course, like typical. And he wiped it away himself and then he, he tasted her tear. I don't know why that's so weird to me, but like he just like, Imagine just like someone's crying like, oh my god, I'm so upset, and someone comes over, wipes your tear, and just goes, eh. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm on page 304, and we've got to the part I have been waiting for, the baseball scene. You all know the baseball scene. If you haven't seen the movies, then the baseball scene is literally one of the best things ever, like, such a perfect cinematic experience, that baseball scene. Like, I've seen that clip several times when it does the rounds on Twitter when everyone's talking about it. It's just such an amazing scene and I am very excited to read about it in the book and I don't know if it's gonna be as good as the movie was, but like that scene was just everything, like everything. Okay, so I've less than 100 pages left and the bad vampires have finally showed up. It was James, Victoria and Laurent, I think that's what their names were and James is like suddenly tracking Bella now And I don't understand this fascination with this girl. Why do they all love her so much? I don't know clearly they don't know her personality But anyways, they're all after her and wanting to kill her now and James has decided to track her and they came up with this plan Which I don't understand the plan. It was very confusing They were like saying they're gonna go to Phoenix and then they're not gonna go to Phoenix and then Edward's not gonna go I'm very confused as to what the plan actually is. Okay, so I'm on page 399. I'm literally coming to the last chapter and I'm a little bit disappointed not gonna lie because the last like couple or so pages have been really intense and fast-paced and like all of this action happening that I've been waiting to get to because it was so slow and dragging at this point because it was all about Bella and Edward's love that I just wasn't buying and then we finally get this like action packed with like this bad vampire and stuff and all this stuff happening and I was like, oh, this is so intense. It's going to get to the part where I know they kill the other vampire because that's what happens in the movie. Like, they kill him and it's, like, such an intense part. And then it gets to the whole part where her being with James and, like, finding out that she was tricked, thinking that he had her mother hostage and stuff. And then, like, he bashes her against the mirror because they're in this, like, ballet studio and 
she starts bleeding and stuff and then like she passes out I'm assuming and then the next thing we know she's there with Edward and Carlisle and Alice and everyone but like we didn't get to see anything happen with James and I'm so <laughs> annoyed I was ready for the action to see him die like I was so prepared for that I was ready I was thriving for it and then I just didn't get it and now I'm so upset like I was really into it I was like oh my god this is so good living I'm thriving like love this action and then I didn't even get the satisfaction of reading James die like <sighs> but honestly like what did I expect it's Twilight clearly what I've understood from reading this is that the movie is so much better than the book like it's just so much better. Like, we got to see that whole action in the movie. We just didn't get in the book. That's just my main conclusion from this, is that the movie is so much better. Okay, guys, so I have finished Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. It is completed, and I can no longer say that I have not read Twilight. And my overall verdict is that this book, I would rate probably a 2 out of 5 stars. And the reason I give it a 2 stars is because I did enjoy myself reading this, even though if it was sort of like... I hate kind of reading experience, you know, I still enjoyed myself, I had a fun time. But for that reason it couldn't be a one star because I did actually enjoy myself a little bit. But it definitely can't be anything higher than a two star because this book had a lot of issues for me, especially Bella in particular, like she was very problematic and a couple of the things that I noticed at the very beginning of the book and some of the things she was saying were quite problematic. And then also the love in here was just way too insta-lovey for me. Like I was not buying it and I did not like the romance. Like I was just like, this is too much. They're like confessing their undying love for each other and that the family are so in love with Bella straight away. And I'm like, this is just, I can't. I just couldn't cope with it. And then I am so pissed that I literally did not get to see James die at the ending. Like I didn't get to see that part like they could do in the movie. I was just so annoyed and also another thing I did actually really like was the baseball scene in the book was also just as good as in the movie. Obviously the movie is so much better than the baseball scene but I did actually really enjoy reading that scene as well. Obviously if you guys love this book, if it's one of your favourite books of all time, I am not judging whatsoever. We all have very different reading tastes. I understand that this book has a lot of nostalgia to many people out there. Please don't be too offended by my opinions on this book because I am obviously reading this at a very later stage. Take all everything I've said with a pinch of salt and yes, that is it. So that is going to be it for this video guys. Let me know down below your thoughts on if you've read this book, what you think of it yourself. And other than that, I shall see you all next time in my next video. So goodbye guys. <laughs>